Hey guys, Stealth here. Today I wanted to show you a quick replay of a deck I tested against the AI. I'm using a British Armored deck, so it's a pure British national deck, giving me 60 activation points and all the prototypes from the British. Now, it's an armored deck, so it focuses mainly on tanks, but what I'm doing here is uh, first opening with infantry. I'm on the Plungeon Valley map, and by now you should really be familiar with this map and all its capabilities. You've got this town in the middle, I want to take that town. You got some buildings here which are very nicely positioned next to these roads where you can really hold the area without taking too much fire. And over here on the right side you have another bit of town. And you, this part is usually easier to, easier to defend than the part here up north. So I want to try and hold all of these zones. And for that I'm going with a group of infantry. Um, sorry, I'm going with multiple groups of infantry carried by FE Warrior 90s. Now these things have gotten a buff in the latest patch and they now carry 6 frontal armor. So they can take a uh, tank shell and they can do quite a bit of damage versus ground forces, although they're not that good against tanks. I'm also opening with command vehicles. I want to have command vehicles in these zones quickly and this way get my income up because right now it's not that good yet. I'm sending out Pumas with scout infantry in all of these sectors and this way I know where the enemy is going to be coming from. My rover CP is going to hide out here with these trees. And the rest is um, a couple of AA infantry, javelins and a couple of ATGM infantry. I do have some tanks, these are the cheaper Chieftain Mark V's. 50 point tanks, just initial vehicle stoppers. But what I saw happen next was something I was not quite prepared for. Because the AI opened with a chopper spam. They were trying to rush me. Now, these choppers in and by themselves are nothing special. They're just 45 point choppers, auto cannon, Miljutkas and Strela AA. So they can basically do it all. But they cannot do it all very well, because the accuracy on all of these weapons is pretty horrible. Now, if you only come up against two of these guys, it's easy. If you come up against a wave of these guys, they suddenly become quite a bit more dangerous. So I instantly offload all of my infantry, even if they're out of position. And I just decide the, to move them in through the town. Now, this is interesting. This MiG is already doing a bombing run. That's quite dangerous early on in the game, although in a multiplayer you might be able to pull it off if the enemy has static AA, which means that it has the stat tag and can only fire it when it's not moving. As you can see I'm taking some losses here. I already lost a chieftain, I lost a couple of warriors and I lost an FE 432. Now these javelins are taking these helicopters down, but their rate of fire is not as good that they can take them all down in one go. Double kill there. Over here we still have an aircraft flying over my lines, but since I only have these javelins here, and the javelins only have a range of almost 2 kilometers against aircraft, they're not that good. Now I offloaded all of my infantry here, and here without really looking what I was doing because I was too focused on this area and I was hoping that my infantry was close enough to these buildings so they would automatically go in there. Now we have some new tanks coming in. They got T72 MIMs or M1Ms. 95 point tanks and uh, they did take out this group of ATGMs which were in a perfect position to take shots so instead I'm going to use these Milan 2s to engage these guys. Perfect side shot, 95 points. So, as you can see, so far in an armored deck, I haven't really used a tank yet. I haven't really used anything out of the ordinary. And um, that means that you can still use infantry extremely effectively if you use them the right way, if you use them to capture towns. I could have used them out here in the open, which would not be a good idea. <coughs> I could have used them uh, in the forest lines here, where they had absolutely no range. But here I have the Milan 2s firing at tanks and vehicles, I have the javelins firing at helicopters, and the fusiliers for close defense. 
green jackets for spotting and you have a very nice self-contained group which does run out of ammo pretty quickly because these guys carry 12 missiles and the same goes for the javelins now some more helicopters coming in my javelins are being blocked by these buildings so they cannot see them what I should have done here is move them to the other building <coughs> Now at this point in time I called in a couple of chieftain marksmen and I used these uh, self-propelled air-to-air guns, sorry, anti-air guns to go after uh, helicopters, aircraft I quickly take down as much as I could here because there was a lot of helicopters incoming Now I also realized that uh, my anti-tank weaponry is not up to par, my anti-vehicle weaponry Milans are empty, they only got their L85 left Fusiliers are taking a beating. They're only with 8 guys out of 20. They still have a lot of anti-tank weaponry available, but their range isn't very good. T-72 M1Ms will probably take 2 hits before going down. Uh, these javelins are running out of ammo, and while I do have these chieftains here, they will run out of ammo quickly. So I need to bring in some more units. The sooner you realize these kinds of situations, what you need to do, the sooner you can react and the better your chances of actually surviving. Now the AI in this deck is definitely fond of using mortars, which is absolutely the right call. The more mortars you use, the more you stun and panic the enemy. And here we can see a wrong example of how to use infantry. These commandoses are just crossing an open field where they're extremely vulnerable. They probably came out of these BVP-1s and the BVP-1s offloaded them somewhere here. This is where I first got eyes on them and they're just sending them across the field. I'm not even sure where. If you want to cross a field you take this building the soonest or the closest building you can find but instead they're just going south. Now I'm trying to relocate some of these forces trying to get them to safety but my uh, green jackets recon get destroyed. I realize that my fusiliers are down to 5, my Milans are useless here, so I start to pull back these units. And I'm trying to get some damage done with these chieftains, but you can see just how quickly they chew through their armor. Now they did do a lot of damage against these commandoses, but they didn't kill them. Or actually, yeah, they killed one squad. Now I still have T-72 M1Ms moving up through the town, and there's BVPs, so I'm going to pretty difficult spot here. So time to call in some reinforcements. Reinforcements do arrive in the form of two Challenger 1 Mark 3s. Pretty expensive tank, 155. I would not quite class them as a super heavy, but they are very very effective at taking out vehicles and tanks. Not so much infantry of course, since a tank is usually not the best weapon to do that. But it would be nice to have them here. Now at this point I realized that my challengers are way too close. I put these guys on move fast to this location where I was going to use them to take down tanks and vehicles. But right now they're way too close to these commandoses. And these commandoses, if they're in range, which is not going to be far away, 875, they're already in range, can take a shot at my challengers. So it's time to get these guys out of here and try to reverse them as soon as possible. Keep your distance when using tanks against infantry. If infantry manages to get in close, you're in trouble. Interestingly, on both flanks here, nothing is going on. I haven't even organized my defense here really well, nor have I done the thing here. So, basically the AI is just pushing everything down the middle, trying to take this zone from me, trying to kill as many units as possible, and they're really succeeding in it, although I do manage to get a lead of a thousand points on them. But again, it's the AI, it's not difficult. Now these guys really need some help. One fusilier left. The javelins are still available, but um, <coughs> they are completely out of ammo. So I only have my challengers, which are blind here, and I do want to put them up front because I cannot cover them with AA. Because my chieftain markmans are empty. So I managed to kill a couple of units here. The AI does put some infantry here, so that was probably a vehicle. 
And this is always an interesting thing. They saw this Puma fly off, which is only a 20-point transport helicopter. Instantly, they bring in a MiG-29, which is a 135-point plane, to try and take down that helicopter. Doesn't quite work that way. And I do manage to score a hit on him, I think. No, he managed to get away. Now, I was also bringing in a lot of Chinook transports, just to keep everything refueled. And especially rearmed, because they were running out of ammo. So I call in my Eurofighter Typhoon. <coughs> and this is not exactly a fair fight. Eurofighter Typhoon is a 175 point plane, if you haven't used it yet. It got excellent accuracy MRAM missiles at a 7 km range. 50% ECM, which is very, very high. Exceptional air detection and 1000 km per hour speed. With a turn radius of 300, so they can engage in dogfighting. Now these planes aren't bad, but they're simply not up to the level of the uh, Eurofighter. They also have a long-range AA missile, uh, they have little less ECM, same turn radius, same speed. But my Eurofighter came in from behind. This guy was making his turn back, probably to go after Chinook, and that is when I engage him. And he gets taken down by the Eurofighter. Immediately evac the Eurofighter, because I do not know how many AA units they have. Now, since that was going on and was claiming all of my attention, these Challenger Mark, uh, these Challenger ones were taking a lot of fire. And as you can see, uh, the second tank, Lee, went down to one inch of his health, one block, and he did take another ATGM hit, or just about to. This thing missed, fortunately. And I was really quite cautious with these things because you don't want to lose a 155-point tank. As you can see, instantly, after I land this helicopter, mortar fire on its position. So that's something they did really, really well. Now this is something I wanted to highlight as well. These challengers are both panicked, but they can still get 50% accuracy while firing at this, M or this T-72. So they are still quite combat capable. He fires and kills the T-72. He's being met by some mortar fire again. But by now we're leading with almost 1300 points. Now I n realize that those challenger, sorry, those fusiliers are never going to stand up to 40 Motostrelki. So time to send those away. And I'm going to uh, pull back my defenses just so to rearm and um, repair everything I have. Harrier GR7 comes in with a couple of bombs for these guys. Doesn't really do a lot of damage. No surprise there since it's a precision weapon. And not something you use against infantry. Get these Chinooks out of here, get the Javelins out of here. Now I'm pulling my tanks back faster than I'm pulling back my infantry because my infantry is worth a lot less points. So in this case I found it more useful to retreat my tanks and the Chinook which is about to repair them is already in position because I'm going to call them back to this ridge line where if you zoom in they have excellent overwatch. They can fire along this road up until the town but anything that comes out of this town is going to get instantly destroyed by these Challenger uh, ones. On the move they have an accuracy of 50%, sitting still 65%. They have a very high AP power gun, 21. So these guys were really in a good position. And I found that while they can be used on the offensive, they're a little better when they're defending. Now a lot of ATGMs coming in. And if you want to defeat ATGMs, and you have a forest, just retreat over the ridge line. That's when those things will lose line of sight, and that's when they'll get... Um, th yeah, they lose the target. Chieftain Mark 1's, or sorry, Chieftain Marksman's are still trying to survive here. Now these warriors were going to town, but with this many vehicles around, I'm not going there. So instead I'm trying to get some kills on these vehicles. And the warriors have a lot of range, and they can take an ATGM. So I'm being pretty aggressive with these guys. But soon mortar fire will probably come in, so I gotta be ready for that.
chances of firing, destroying these units. Unfortunately I lost one chieftain. And the other one is panicked. And uh, very heavily damaged. It does have a lot of ammo though. Full complement. But I'm still going to send it back to the FOB to repair it. Now, if you're looking at these lines. Something is missing. What is missing here? Recon. If you didn't see it, recon is missing. I don't have eyes on any of these targets. I know they're there, but I just can't see them. These uh, warriors have poor optics. Challengers have medium optics, which is still not very good. So what I need to do now is call in a recon unit, just to get eyes on. Without eyes, no targets. Without targets, you're probably going to take fire way before you can fire at them. As you can see, these guys got pretty close to my warriors before being detected. And that's really something to highlight, because if I had recon somewhere over here, they would have been detected about here, exiting the town. My challengers could have fired earlier, my warriors could have fired earlier, but this is the penalty for not having recon. So always make sure your recon is up to par. Now this chieftain marksman is being repaired at the FOB. And something else I wanted to mention is it's okay to retreat every once in a while. If it makes sure that you survive, that your forces survive, then you don't really always need to be on the offensive. It's better to retreat and have a point advantage, especially in destruction matches, than to just keep pushing, pushing, pushing and hope for the best. I've often retreated, you even see me do it in campaigns if you've been watching those. And I retreat to positions where I'm better capable of setting up a defense. I uh, survive the wave of units coming at me. And once that's done, I can go on the offensive again. Because I still have a lot of units, I still have a lot of points. They may have a bit more income, but in some situations they will have exhausted their uh, offensive options, or at least quite a bit so that I can go on the offensive and take as many of the regions as they have taken from me. Now, quite a bit of infantry right in the open. Again, not exactly how you're supposed to use infantry. I got my warriors here and a scimitar recon vehicle. I finally have eyes in. And this is pretty clever. The AI seems to realize that my warriors and their infantry are quite dangerous to their infantry. So they smoke the position of the warriors. And as you can see, one of them can fire. That's this one. The other one can't, because he's completely engulfed in smoke. And this way, he can <coughs> somewhat increase the survivability of his infantry. Now they both lost line of sight. Which does also give me time to get out of here. Because they fired quite a lot of their rounds, only 60 left, and they're pretty damaged. At least one of them is. Now these challengers are still firing. They did take mortar fire, but it didn't really hurt them. Now they're firing an accuracy of 90% against this infantry. So you have a base accuracy of 65, and then all of the veterancy bonuses. And that's when you get up to 90% accuracy on the tank. And now I've also called in a tracked rapier or rapier. I'm not exactly sure how I'm supposed to pronounce this. These is uh, th sorry. These are the anti-helicopter rapiers. You also have the tracked rapier FRS, which has a better range against airplanes. But they were uh, pretty fond of using helicopters and not so much aircraft. So I decided to call in a tracked rapier to deal with the helicopters at long range while the chieftain was being repaired. Now I also called in a Centurion AVRE. Just, hold on, look at the gun that this thing is carrying. This is a 165mm gun. Extremely high HE power and very, very effective against infantry. They are not very accurate, but usually they don't need to be. And I called these things in to deal with all of the infantry that was out here. But naturally, by the time it arrived, the infantry was dead. 
so I didn't really have a lot of use for it other than engaging this town later on. Now I'm getting these challengers out of here, trying to do a counter push. Um, the forest is also on fire, so I don't really want my tanks in there. If you were defending against these challengers, and you know that my air defense isn't very good, you could have sent an HGM plane in here. Because, um, let's look at the lines from this side. Let's see what the AI can see. The AI knows I have a Centurion Marksman here. Um, if I was reading this situation from the Red Force side, I would try and get one or two hits on these challengers using ATGMs. The first thing I would do is get ATGM infantry in this town to really put up a defensive line and push me back. And then uh, possibly use ATGM planes to go after these units or push up with some ATGM carriers. Switching back to my side. Now I do have a Scimitar Recon vehicle in here, but they only have good optics, not even very good. Um, they're definitely good fire support vehicles, but as Recon they're sometimes somewhat lacking. Unfortunately, um, the UK armored deck doesn't have a lot of recon options available. Now this tank's getting stunned, but you can see how the heavy armor really protects it well. Doing a bombing run on these vehicles here. But of course since it's the AI it always knows exactly when and where you're going to strike. And they managed to get away and instead I only get a couple of colas down. Logistics vehicles. I blind fire with my Centurion because I know that there's AA infantry in here somewhere and the splash damage at least might damage them. And by now we're just wrapping up. 2600 points already, they only got 600 points so it's really quite easy. Bringing in some more tanks because I was preparing an offensive against this town. I had these warriors which were here on earlier. I had them repaired, rearmed and now they're going to meet up with their fusiliers to push into the town. Bring in another group of fusiliers in warriors. <coughs> uh, by the way, you can have the warrior uh, 90, which I'm using here, or the warrior uh, 90 ATGM, or the warrior 90 Milan, I believe it's called. That does come with an ATGM, but it reduces the availability somewhat, and uh, the Milan isn't really that good. I don't, th yeah, I really didn't think it was worth the increase in price. So that's why I'm not using those guys. As you can see, absolutely nothing happened on these flanks. I may have killed some infantry here and a helicopter or two there, but that's about it. Everything happened in Bravo. And that also is a beautiful example, now that I'm thinking of it, of... Um, how the AI could have read the map better. I did a video on this earlier where I explained how if you're using helicopters it's much safer not to go through the middle but to go all the way around. If they'd have come in with a big helicopter push from the beginning or at least later on in the game go over all of these ridges, all of these mountains and then come in from behind they could have easily taken out these rover CPs taken over my main spawn by that, by, or at least neutralizing it and that way, just easily rolling over all of my forces. So that's something you could do if you're using an airborne deck, for example. Or helicopters, for that matter. Now, time to push in. Challengers have really done a good job this time. And they're still alive. Now, keep in mind that this Lee tank, the lower one, was the one that was uh, taken down to within an inch of his health. And he managed to survive. I offload my infantry and that's the end of the game. So what you saw here was um, a very interesting game because it was basically an armor deck not using armor. I only used two tanks effectively. I also had of course a couple of the centurions but they really didn't do anything. They got destroyed on quite early in the game. Um, I did call in some other units later some other tanks but they didn't do a lot either. Now let's have a look at the kill list. 
nothing really special so far until we come up against these challengers. They have something of a list built up, although not exactly a lot of important kills. Some 95 point tanks. And if you'd add all of these units up, then you'd still get a lot more points than 155, which is the price of the challenger. So it definitely earned itself. Now, not much else important here. And this is what I wanted to show you. Always have a look at your losses screen. Because on your losses screen, you can see how many units you lost, and especially to what. Now, this is uh, something many people don't do, but I find it very useful because this way you can pinpoint accuracy, sorry, you can pinpoint weaknesses in your deck. In this situation, I can see that I lost quite a bit of infantry and even a tank versus a Tunsha, which I believe is uh, their version of AA. So this is a ground vehicle that destroyed infantry, which means I wasn't protecting that infantry well enough. Now the T-72s, I only see those a couple times, so they didn't do a lot. The helicopters didn't really do a lot of damage. Let's see, a couple of BVPs killed Milans. Those are the transports from the Kamandosi. Uh, I lost a couple of Rardens to helicopters. Now the majority of their kills of their more important kills are done by helicopters. So that means that in this deck, or at least in this game, my air defense wasn't that good. So always try and check this thing. Uh, try and get familiar with the units in the game. I know there are way too many of them, or at least uh, never enough for me, but 1500 units. It might be difficult to get used to them, to get familiar with all of their titles, all of their names, all of their uses. But once you do, you really have an advantage in the game because you can predict exactly what kind of unit it is, what its capabilities are, and you can recognize them in these after-match uh, screens where you can see what kind of weaknesses you have in your deck. So, I'm sorry if you were expecting a full-on tank war. That is not what this turned into. But I wanted to show you the game anyway because it can really show you how effective infantry is and how you can micromanage a couple of tanks, such as those Challenger 1 Mark 3s I was using, to really um, effectively take down vehicles. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit like. If you want to see more of my videos, subscribe to my channel. And if you want to see more of my videos instantly, the moment they come up, uh, follow me on Facebook. I have a Facebook page now, and the link is in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video.